Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, soccer fans of all ages, it must be September again because here we are at Armand Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium on the campus of Brockton High School for the 2017 season of Brockton High School girls soccer. And today, they take on their rivals from the town to the west, the Oliver Ames Tigers, coming in both teams' first game of the season, and it should be a good one. I am Mad Dog Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action from high atop Colombo Field. The interesting story for this season for the Brockton Boxers, number 10, the leading scorer for the Boxers last season and her 30 goals. Gabriela Del Pico is not allowed to play this year. She is committed to Harvard University as a sophomore. And Harvard has told her that she has to play for a club team called the Developmental Academy. And DA's rules state that they cannot play in high school soccer and clubs. So she had to pick one or the other. Harvard's a little bit more important than Brockton High, and we are underway. Oliver Ames, the Tigers wearing their way, black jerseys, black shorts, orange and white trim, Brockton High, wearing their home whites with red and black trim. Starting goaltenders for the Tigers, it is Reagan Benton, and for the boxers, Tori Viola Laffery making her return in her senior season. Very strong preseason for Miss Viola Laffery. Pitching a shutout in a few of the games, making a handful of amazing saves in the others. Senior captain Danelle Davids kicking the ball out of bounds. OA with the throw in on the far side. This is Davids again, popping it out of bounds. OA with great position for a throw in. And my double A rule state two 40 minute halves with stoppage time coming at the end of the second. Here's Oliver Ames with an opportunity. A shot is going to go just wide to the left. And the Tiger behind that one did not get all of the ball. That was number 10, Brianna Gibson. David's chasing it down in the middle. All Rams winning that battle, and now it's number 11 for the Tigers, Jacqueline Mills, with a shot and a save by Viola Laffery, her first of the game. Number of returning starters for the boxers this year. Senior captain, Jeanne Domenci Silva, along with Tori Viola Laffery. Couple of juniors, Lara Cardozo, Madison Hendrigan. And part of that super sophomore group from last season, Olivia Mathelier, Kayla Murphy, Megan Ortendahl, Olivia Shaw, Jayla Smith, the list goes on and on. A junior heavy team for the boxers. Nine of them listed on the roster. A couple of exciting freshmen making their boxer debuts as well. Vanessa Dos Anjos and Lena Marion. Of course, the concern for the boxers is to kind of fill the hole left by Gabriela Del Pico. Again, she scored 30 goals last year to lead the Division One south section I believe she was top three in the state as well David sending this one up number two with it for the boxers that is Olivia Shaw Tigers take over and back and forth across midfield 
36 minutes to go. Still trying to gain their identity as Bill Laffrey comes out, makes a diving save under a few jumping boxers. This one sent up to number 23, Lara Cardozo. Cardozo for number 10, the number one last season by Gabby Del Pico. taking over Brockton playing four around the 50 yard line of the football markings in a tempe tempestoso pardon me on the name for the Oliver Rams Tigers playing midfield chasing the ball down now now it is Janae Domenci Silva sending one all the way in towards Reagan Benton who picks up the easy save. Now Hendrigan in the middle sending it behind her back for number four. That is sophomore Alicia Talkman. Cardozo. And we're going to have a free kick for the boxers just inside their own midfield line. Or it'll be a throw in, rather, number seven to do the honors. That is Jayla Curran Stewart, sophomore defender. Now this is Tempestoso. And it's going to be offsides against the Tigers. Rocked in with the kick from the 34 yard line. 33 minutes to go in the first half. In the opener to the 2017 season for both the Oliver Rams Tigers and the Brockton Boxers. Beautiful weather for really any sporting event, but soccer in particular tonight. It's about 75 degrees, a slight breeze. The Boxers have an opportunity. And mysterious number 10 for the boxers. Couldn't get a direct shot off on net. Serena De Silva unable to keep this one in bounds. Oliver Ames throwing. Another Oliver Ames thrown. 32 minutes to go. This one sent up, staying on sides. About six inches are the Oliver Ames Tigers. This is number 11 charging in towards Tori Viola Laffrey. The crosser shot. Oh, what a save off the shin of Viola Laffrey. The ball's still loose. And it's going to trickle in for an Oliver Ames goal. A phenomenal sequence of saves for Tori Viola Laffrey. Unable to dive on it. There were a few loose bodies playing Deadwood out in front. 
and Oliver Ames ultimately able to convert and they take a one to nothing lead with 31 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first half. Number 11 was right in there for the Tigers, Jacqueline Mills. She has the ball now. Over to number seven, Emily Noselec. Now Tepistoso is pushed off the ball by Cardozo. Now spinning up to still the unnamed number 10. Madison Hendrigan now in the middle. Excellent self pass, just a little bit too far taken there by number 18, Abigail Reardon for the Tigers. Number four with some space, Alicia Tokeman. Tempestoso taking it for the Tigers. And now up with some room is number 10, Brianna Gibson. Gibson in alone, and she's tripped up from behind. No call, and the boxers take over. Excellent defensive play for the boxers. There's Mills sending this one in on Deal Laffrey, who picks up another easy save. Kayla Murphy wearing number 10 for the boxers. Now a shot by Mills and another good save by Viola Laffery. Ten is Kayla Murphy, member of that phenomenal super sophomore group from last year. Twenty-eight minutes to go. One nothing lead for the Oliver Ames Tigers. Now, semi break staying on sides and able to get back was the defense of the Brockton boxers, Jayla Curran Stewart, with the chase from behind to break up a 2 on 0 break for the Tigers. And Viola Laffrey able to pick up the loose ball. Now number three for the boxers, Lena Marion, the freshman, all the way in her cross is gonna be picked up by Benton. with a midfield heavy pressure based system. It's turning into offensive opportunities for the Tigers. It's Brianna Gibson charging in, pushing a boxer out of the way and it'll be a free kick for Brockton from their own 20 yard line.
some wind coming in from the south. Sustained breeze of about four miles an hour, gusts up to about 10. Special weather report brought to you by the Mad Dog weather team. Laffrey charging out, out of her net as the ball shielded by Curran Stewart and sent back to midfield by the senior goaltender. Now Kayla Murphy between the legs of Brianna Gibson. Oliver Ames able to punch it back towards the boxer's side of the field. This one's going to find its way out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick for the Tigers. A few more substitutions. And coming in for the boxers, senior forward Kyla Colors. She replaces Alicia Tokman. Big week for Brockton High Sports tomorrow night. The rivals from the other border of town, the Bridgewater Random Trojans, come to Marciano Stadium. Of course, bearing the weather. And on Saturday, it is the opener for the Brockton Boxers football team. BCA Sports traveling just a little bit north to cover that game up in Lexington. This one sent into the Tigers bench off of Oliver Ames. So Ka Kayla Murphy sending it to Dimanche Silva in the middle to the outside for number 24, Serena De Silva. De Silva unable to keep it in. And Oliver Ames with a throw in back the other way. Tempestoso coming back into the game for the Tigers. 23 minutes to go. She replaces number 23, Annabella Walsh. Lena Marion up for number one, Jayla Smith. Smith fighting for it. And the Tigers ultimately taking possession. Jeanne Domenici Silva getting it back. Now back to Smith, looking to the middle for Murphy, who gets tripped up. And Tempestoso picks up the loose ball. Now Hendrigan for Kyla Colors, Colors chasing this one down and it will go out of bounds for another Oliver Ames throw in. 21 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high atop Colombo Field here at Marciano Stadium. And the season opener for the Brockton Boxers.
Landrigan on the far side. And out of bounds off of Brockton once again. Another substitution for Oliver Ames. Abigail Reardon coming back into the game. She replaces Jacqueline Mills. Or rather, number three, Alexis Campbell. Karn Stewart able to chase this one down. And a bad giveaway, and Oliver Ames with an opportunity. A shot is going to be picked up by Viola Laffrey with 20 minutes remaining in the first half. Hendrigan a little bit too far for De Silva. Yo Laffrey with yet another diving save as Jacqueline Mills applying some offensive pressure. Good trap there by Kayla Murphy. But good defensive pressure as has been the case all night for the Oliver Ames Tigers. And another goal out of nowhere for the Oliver Ames Tigers. There's a lot of confusion out in front for the boxer defense and a two to nothing lead with 18 minutes to go in the first half for Oliver Ames. We're going to see a replay of that goal. Laura Cardozo coming into the game for the boxers. Brockton in some dire straits here. We would think they need to score before the half. Just have a little bit of reprieve mentally. Oh. Caleb Murphy unable to get her foot on it. Now Hendrigan in the middle trying to send it up for Murphy just a little bit too far. And the Oliver Ames defense again takes over. Yeah. 
15 minutes left in the first half. Two to nothing in favor of Oliver Ames. Collision midair. To now David's able to clear it back towards midfield. Oliver Ames a very fast team as we're seeing in this front first half. Boxer slow to get up. I believe that is Kayla Murphy favoring her right leg. Murphy still favoring that right leg. Looks like she will be replaced as Olive Rames has yet another opportunity. Jacqueline Mills. Stopping and a three on two with a cross is not going to find number 23 on the other end, Annabella Walsh. And the boxers escape immediate danger. As Kayla Murphy finds her way out of the game in favor of Alicia Tokman. Twelve minutes and ten seconds left in half number one. Oliver Ames up two to nothing, threatening once again. Jacqueline Mills from the right side. Her cross is going to be broken up, but a shot will find a lot of free air to the right of the goalposts and the substitution for the Tigers, Aaron Holmberg will replace Mills. Jayla Smith able to clear it out of bounds. Oliver Ames are thrown deep in boxer territory. Referee thought about a penalty there for 
the throw in as number two for the Tigers, Margaret Alt. Stepping over the red line. Now a shot, and this one is through the football uprights. Under 10 minutes to go now, 9.45 to go. And Tempestoso coming back into the game for the Tigers. Eight forty three to go now in the first half. We have a shot after the whistle, as I believe there's going to be a penalty kick for the Tigers. If Bill Laffery is warming up for such an event. A free kick, it's going to be taken by, I believe that is Tempestoso. Her shot far left and off the fingertips and deflected out by Torrevio Laffrey. Oliver Ames with it. Back across midfield into boxer territory. And Vail Laffrey charging out of her net. Sending it back towards midfield, but taken by the Tigers once again. Now number three has it for Brockton. That is the freshman Lena Marion. Tempestoso up to Annabella Walsh. Out of bounds off of the boxers. Oliver Ames only playing three defenders back and showing on the scoreboard a very gr aggressive attack for Oliver Ames. He's forcing the boxers to stay on their heels 
in their own defensive zone. Aaron Holmberg up, and we're gonna have an offsides against the Tigers with five and a half minutes to go again. The clock will stop at two minutes. Official time kept on the field by the referees. We here at Brockton Community Access try to do our best to gauge how much of that two minutes has elapsed. The referees have caught on to our little game and they like to add or subtract time just to mess with us. Jacqueline Mills back into the game along with Alexis Campbell for the Tigers. Hendrigan can't keep possession. Oliver Ames takes over. Now up to Campbell. Back across midfield, taken for the boxes by Tokeman. Tokeman up for Cardozo. And again, Oliver Ames taking over. Jayla Smith back towards the Tigers end of the field. Relentless pressure in all phases of the field for the Oliver Ames Tigers and now with another opportunity and a diving stop. We have a whistle as Danell Davids is slow to get up. Nicely executed slide tackle by Davids with three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Two to nothing, Oliver Ames on top of Brockton in the season opener for both of these teams. Back and forth across midfield now, 2.45 to go in the first half. Offsides against Oliver Ames, free kick for Brockton at their own 34 yard line. Now Brockton with an opportunity, a weak cross, and Oliver Ames able to send it back out towards midfield. Two minutes unofficially left in the first half. Official time again kept on the field by the referees. We do have a stopwatch going up here in the booth that started right as we hit two minutes, about 15 seconds into that time now. Two nothing, Oliver Ames, and an excellent cross and headed up, and Viola Laffery making a jumping save. A whistle for the boxers' injury substitution. As it is Danelle Davies heading to the boxer bench. About a minute left here in the first half. 
The boxers trying to punch one home before the whistles blow. Oliver Ames with another offensive opportunity across and able to be broken up. And the whistles blow about one minute and 40 seconds into the last two minutes. And so at the end of the first half, the score is the Oliver Ames Tigers two, the Brockton Boxers nothing. We're gonna step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Good morning. Hope you all had a good weekend and are ready to be inspired. One quick thing I want to remind you guys to be studying. Major key alert. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Class, today we're talking about inspirational quotes. You want to get that paper? You better turn in that paper and get an A+. Plus. That's a major key. Another one. Another. Mogul talk. You want to reach the mountaintop? You got to go hard. To succeed, you have to believe. Stay focused, fly higher than the eagle. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote from recent history? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Welcome back into Armand Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Oliver Ames Tigers and the Brockton Boxers. Decent amount of action on one side of the field. The score, Oliver Ames 2, Brockton nothing. Again, I'm Matt Dog, Matt Nelson, bringing you all the action High atop the turf here at Brockton High School. In the season opener for both of these teams, we have a free kick for Oliver Ames from right in front of their bench. Sending it right in on net and deflected away by Olivia Mathelier. Now a shot is caught by Toryville Laffrey who all things considered, has had a very strong game thus far. All of Rams offsides as Tempestoso sent it in ahead of the boxers. Stewart able to chase this one down, sending it out of bounds. OA throwing deep in boxer territory. Header by Tempestoso out of bounds behind the net. Goal kick for the boxers. Kayla Murphy to Domenici Silva. 
Comanche Silva creating some space around midfield. Back and forth across the 50-yard line. Up to Hendrigan. Hendrigan looking for Murphy. Broken up by the staunch Tiger defense. Now sent up trying to create some space is Annabella Walsh. It finds Toryville Laffery. A lot of experience on this boxer team. The group of nine super sophomores from last year all getting valuable playoff experience. In the MIAA South Sectional Tournament, the boxers traveled in the first round, which is always a tough task to begin with, but defeating Plymouth South at Plymouth in the first round. In, in talking to now second year head coach Denise Glennon before the game and before the season she said, with the loss of Gabby Del Pico, it actually takes a lot of pressure off because the boxers can spread the ball out more, spread the offense out more. There's not really any pressure to score a lot of goals. Gabby put up 30 last year. That's a huge number. And she said, the boxers are really... Just looking to have some fun and, and figure out who they are as a corner kick for the Tigers broken up by Hendrigan finds its way out of bounds. We will do it again. But the veteran heavy team for the boxers, senior captains, Janae Dimanche Silva, Tori Viola Laffrey. The now junior group, as this one is headed up between the uprights. Lara Cardozo, Madison Hendrigan, Olivia Mathelier, Kayla Murphy, Megan Ortendahl, Olivia Shaw, Shayla Smith. And then even a couple underclassmen cracking the boxers roster. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the second half now. Brockton trying to claw its way back from a 2-0 deficit. This cross is sent out of bounds off of the boxers. We will have a corner kick from the far corner for the Tigers. It looks like it will be number 8 taking it, Sophia Cox. Right into the middle of the box. Tempestoso missing it, still loose and unable to get a shot on Tori Viola Laffrey. We're at the Oliver Ames Tigers. Now Kayla Murphy battling for it. Tempestoso takes it. And now a shot and a save by Viola Laffery. But seems like her 10th save of the game. Now Walsh creating some space. Unable to save it over the goal line. But it touched a boxer last. So yet another corner kick after seeing none in the first half. We already have four in the second. Oh. 
sent very far back. A couple of different strategies. And this one finds the back of the net out of nowhere. All of Rames able to get a shot off in. Viola Laffery couldn't see over the wall of boxers. And All of Rames takes a 3 to nothing lead. Three to nothing, all of Reims with about half an hour left of regulation time. The boxers now have that much bigger of a hole to climb out of, but I want to take this opportunity to deliver some good news for the Brockton boxers. Head coach Denise Glennon in her second season has told us she is expecting a little baby girl that will one day play soccer for the Brockton Lady Boxers. So congratulations to the Glennons and the Brockton Lady Boxer family. We'll be adding a member soon enough. Aaron Holmberg into the game. She replaces Anna Tempestoso. Vanessa Dos Anos into the game for the boxers. As this cross is just a little bit too far, but it is now taken by Holmberg. Holmberg sending it back into the middle. A attempted bicycle kick, but not getting off the ground was... The Tiger out in front, and this one sent through the uprights. The first week of September is always a fun, fun week. Of course, we've got the season opener for the Lady Boxers here tonight. Bridgewater Raynham coming to town tomorrow. Dependent on the two inches of rain an hour we're supposed to see. To face the Brockton boys soccer team in their season opener. And now another opportunity for Oliver Ames. This one's going to be sent a little bit too far. And out of bounds. Thursday night, nothing going on in Brockton, but for the 74,000 people lucky enough to get their hands on a ticket, Kansas City Chiefs come to Foxborough, the season opener for the Patriots. Everybody's favorite resident of New England, Roger Goodell, expected to be in attendance at that game. And Saturday, BCA Sports travels up to Lexington as the football team has their season opener up north of Boston. Kayla Murphy with it now, finding a little hole, getting it back, sending it all the way in on Reagan Benton, the goaltender for the Tigers. And an offsides against the Tigers, who were looking to convert an easy opportunity. Wind starting to pick up here at Marciano Stadium. Gusts up to 15 miles an hour with sustained breeze of about 7 miles an hour coming now from the west.
Now another opportunity for the Tigers. This one loose. Viola Laffrey's out of her net. Able to keep it alive are the Tigers. That is Jacqueline Mills on the far side and finding its way out of bounds. And some good catch-up defense for the boxers as Oliver Ames will have yet another corner kick. This one sent high over the net all the way through and out of bounds. No harm, no foul for the boxers. Twenty-five minutes remaining, three to nothing. Oliver Ames on top of the Brockton Boxers. It's going to be a free kick for the Tigers deep in Boxer territory. It'll come. Just outside of the goalie's box. The shot across the box picked up by Viola Laffery. And the boxers again escape. Bill Laffrey guarding this one as it rolled out of bounds off of Oliver Ames. Oliver Ames sending it back onto the boxers side of the field. 23 and a half minutes. Left is Brockton trying to claw their way back from a now three to nothing deficit. Lara Cardozo coming back into the game. She replaces Serena Da Silva. This one finding its way out of bounds. Brockton really unable to break the defensive line of the Tigers all night. It's just a few shots throughout the game have found their way to goaltender Reagan Benton. And now 
A break for the Tigers. This is number eight all the way in. Her shot is saved by Toriville Laffery. The latest opportunity coming from Sophia Cox of the Tigers. Now Kayla Murphy trying to get something going for the boxers. She finds Janae Demanche Silva. Now Cardozo trying to get it up to Jayla Smith. Unsuccessful, Oliver Ames takes over. Donnell David's coming back into the game, so good to see she's not injured. She came out a little bit earlier after twisting her knee. Sophia Mascarelli coming into the game for Oliver Ames. She replaces number 36, Maeve Hogan. Laffrey picking this one up. 19 minutes to go in the second half. Again, Oliver Ames 3, Brockton nothing in the season opener here at Marciano Stadium. Now Kayla Murphy finding a hole on the near sideline. Her shot is going to go wide and Oliver Ames able to clear out but Brockton will have a throw in deep in Tiger territory. Five on three up turf for the Tigers. This one goes just a little bit too far for the Tigers. And Viola Laffery wasting some time off the clock before sending it towards midfield where it's taken out of bounds by Brockton. Now across and Mills with a shot that goes wide. This one sent up turf by the boxers before being taken back. What would be down turf by the Oliver Ames Tigers.
Bill Laffrey making a, yet another save. And as the weather seems to pick up here a little bit, we here at BCA Sports would like to remind our fine viewers, please do not wait until the last minute to batten down the hatches for Hurricane Irma coming early next week. A lot of rain and wind expected with that one. Please go get your milk and bread before the end of this week so it's not a complete madhouse in Market Basket on Monday and Tuesday. Devastation caused by Irma as yet another breakaway and a shot and another goal for the Oliver Ames Tigers. I believe that's number 20, Emily Freeman, punching that one past Tori Viola Laffrey. And with 15 minutes left to go, you've got to wonder if the boxers are thinking about making a goaltending change. Kieran Olmstead, the only other goalie listed on the boxers roster, has not begun warming up on the sidelines. But Hurricane Irma's devastation expected to be that much worse because FEMA is still responding in Houston to the 58 or so inches of water that has flooded Houston. They're going to be stretched really thin with a few hurricanes in line next week. There's one right on the heels of Irma 2 that was just named expected to be category 5. A lot of rain expected tomorrow night. Upwards of an inch of rain an hour threatening the Brockton boys soccer opener here at Marciano against Bridgewater Random as Viola Laffrey makes another save. But even with all this terrible weather we're expecting, Armand Colombo Field here at Marciano Stadium handles water very well. The shout out, of course, is necessary to not so newly named athletic director Kevin Cairo. <laughs> And his staff here at Brockton High School. And we're going to be joined by, that That might be an official title right there, not so newly named athletic director, Kevin Carroll. Well, welcome back, Matt. It just, um, hard to believe we're already back to fall sports. It's even harder to believe that it just means that it was a, another year Added on to the total that you were my history teacher at East Middle School. Yeah, thanks for East reminding East Junior me. High School. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. Well, we got some work to do out here. There's no question about it. I mean, first game of the season. I think we're not in as good a shape as they will be later on in the season. It's It's tough. So the interesting part of this season is we at BCA Sports found out just a few hours before kickoff here. Gabby Del Pico not able to, to join the boxers this year. Yeah. Explain that situation, your views well, on clubs versus high school and well, all that good stuff. Well, I really am not 100% sure about what is going on with Gabby other than she's not out here. 
Um, so for me to say anything about a club or what I've heard without talking to her and her mom and dad, I just don't feel comfortable with. But you know what? There's other girls on the team that need to step up, and um, it's a chance for some of the younger kids to get some playing time and, and show coach what they can do. And life goes on. How do you go about filling – it's tough to fill a hole. Yeah. It, but it, 30 goals last year is it's, it, quite it is. the gap. It, it's, it's a big hole to fill, and, um, and I'm sure there's a little panic from the girls that are out there that knew what Gabby was capable of. I mean, obviously she was a tremendous talent to have on the field. Um, but they'll, they'll figure it out. They'll have to learn to play as a team and come together and – you know, I've got complete confidence in the coaching staff and, and just knowing the girls like I do. That, um, you know, this is the first game. We're not pressing panic button just yet. A lot of veteran presence on this team. You had the giant group of super sophomores last year. They, of course, some experience in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Now leading this team, there's, I believe, nine or ten juniors listed on this mm -hmm. roster what does that bring and there's only four underclassmen where do you see the team in a few years well i mean i think number one is you keep everybody healthy i mean obviously that's that's the most important thing um and secondly i mean they need to get in shape i mean i just think that endurance wise and i know that some of the kids play over the summer but there's a big difference between you know Pushing yourself, having your coaches push you a little bit, getting in the weight room, getting a little stronger, getting a little faster. Um, and that will come. And I think that, that last year they, they started off 0-3, even with with Gabby and Maria and, and Megan Anderson and the rest of that very talented crew. Um, and they finally got their groove on when it was when it was crunch time. And I have you know, I have confidence that this is just um, just one game, and we're not going to look too much further into it. Well, you mentioned the weight room. Mm -hmm. So Brockton High with a brand new, freshly painted, state of the art, yeah, training facility. We'll mm -hmm. call it because it's yeah. not just a weight room. Yep. Tell us about that. Well, that all came about last February. Um, where a friend of mine who is a strength coach of Harvard. Um, he came over and looked at the space and he said, hey, this is, this is what we can do. This is what it's going to cost. So we went to the Save Our Sports Foundation and they generously donated um, a substantial amount of money to take out the old equipment, get everything updated as far as the flooring and the turf and buying the new equipment and things of that nature. And now we have a 21st century training facility that you would find in a lot of colleges and um you know we had a t the coaches all trained by by kevin um who's the strength coach and um you know i have a little bit of a background in in exercise and i've been able to work with the teams and we've set up some programs and um i think the kids are really starting to see the benefit of getting in there um, and we have more teams utilizing it, and it was open all summer, and we had quite a few um, members of all our teams in there. And you can tell the ones who did from the ones who did not. Freshly painted, you, you had a professional <laughs> award-winning, they're calling this guy the next Michelangelo. Yeah. Paint it because if, if that's what you want, if that's what you want to call me, <laughs> who wants to go to a weight room that has gray walls? Yeah, uh, it, it was you know? just, you know, the space at the time was cutting edge with the power lifting and um, just throwing a lot of weight up. It was the old way to do things. And for a while it worked. But now, um, obviously, the way that athletes train is evolved. And we wanted to stay current with that. Come on. There's an opportunity for the boxers. A oh. weak shot didn't get all of it. And easily picked up by Reagan Benton. 
Six and a half minutes to go. Four to nothing. Oliver Ames on top of Brockton in this season opener. Yeah, but, but, but going back to the, just what we were talking about, of the way that um, just exercise for sports has evolved. I mean, a lot of it is so specific to each individual sport, and we've been able to tailor workouts for each team. Um, and our boys' volleyball team was really the first one um, to take advantage of the weight room during the season. I mean, we went and worked them out at least three days a week before they had practice. And um, you could see them just get stronger and um, they had better endurance. You know, and they ran into a good team in the tournament at Newton South, but I honestly think that they were um, a product of putting that extra time in in the weight room. And they finished the year 15 and five. Not a bad mark at all. No. So my next question is kind of a whole different animal. In your, we'll call it, regime mm -hmm. of being athletic director, it seems like you're focusing a lot on pride. You want people proud to play for the Brockton Boxers. That's why you're focusing on uniforms that look good and state-of-the-art facilities and all the stuff that the private schools have had mm -hmm. for years, and you're finally trying to bring it to the public schools yeah. to make kids proud to play for the Brockton Boxers and not necessarily say, oh, Severian can offer me this, mm -hmm. Brockton High can't. You're trying to level the playing field and make these kids really proud to put on the uniform of the Brockton yeah. Boxers. Yeah, and I, I honestly would – love to in big picture get Brockton back to what we used to be when you go in and see that from 1995 to 2005 uh, Sports Illustrated recognized Brockton High as the best high school athletic program in the state and there was a time that nobody wanted to play this in football we had to travel to New Hampshire New Jersey New York um, there's 4,400 kids that go to this building and if we can just have them buy in a little bit and working hard and we get catch a little lucky break here and there i think we can get back to what we used to be i really do and i want to have parents when they come to tour the facility if we have open house i want to show them that we have the best facilities in the area and i think um, starting with the stadium here oh what a great what stop. a save by torreville laffrey what a great right stop now. Dives on the loose trash out in front of 2 on 0, broken up by the phenomenal goaltending of the Brockton Lady Yeah, Boxers. she's played really well. I mean, we, we, we could be looking at double digits without some of the, the good play that she has down there. But as far as the stadium goes, man, I mean, we, we have a, a, you know, big plan for this. I'm, I'm hoping that in um, late spring, early summer, we're going to have a new scoreboard, a digital scoreboard out on the far end of the stadium. Um, we're hoping to get a new sound system in before the end of this fall season. And um, you know, just a few changes up here cosmetically. We're gonna do garage doors that have plexiglass in them so we don't have to lug those cumbersome panels off and on when the weather gets bad. So. Hopefully that'll happen relatively soon. And just like I said, I mean, I think it's important for parents to see that we care about sports here, uh, regardless of, you know, the budget crunch and things like that. Um, that we put the best interest of our student athletes out there. We give them the, the best thing that we can. Well, you mentioned when the weather gets bad, looks like sooner rather than later. Of course, a big storm coming tomorrow, but yeah. in the next few weeks, we've got a few hurricanes on the radar. Uh, is is a dome in the plans for no. you? Are you shooting big? No, I, I, I think a dome is completely unrealistic. I mean, would I love to have a dome? Sure, I would. Uh, but I just don't think we could justify the cost to, to put a dome here. Let's talk to the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> 
And I know the MIAA loves to use this facility. Um, you know, as you can see, we're a little dark midfield, but we're hoping that with the um, there's a lighting project that we have been um, incorporated into for the city, and we'll get some new bright LED lights out here. So hopefully that will um, just add another dimension to the this unbelievable stadium. Well, we are in the last two minutes. And it looks like we have. Yeah, we, we have to take away some positives from today. I mean, the goaltending was fantastic. Um, you know, they know what they need to work on. Got to work on some endurance and uh, some conditioning. And I'm th I know the coaches will get right on that. And you know me, especially when it comes to anything that you have to score on, especially with a net, that you have to put the ball or the puck on net. Wayne Gretzky once said it. You can't score if you don't you, shoot. You s absolutely. And, I mean, even if it's, you know, from the 15, 20 yards out and you're downwind, you have to take a chance. And don't look for that perfect pass. And, you know, th it's just – you know, first game of the season, and like I said, we're not going to look too much into it. Well, the roster for the Brockton Boxers in about 15 years is set. We were talking to head coach Denise Glennon before the game. She's expecting a little baby girl. Yeah. As the whistles All blow. Right. And I hate to run, but I've got to go out for the handshake, but... Always good to be back in the booth. Pleasure to be back here at Marciano Stadium. The final score, all of Reims Tigers, four Brockton Boxers, nothing. They get shout out in their season opener. Move to 0 and 1 on the year. But a number of positives for the Brockton Boxers. Good defense. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out tonight. And very, very, very Our solid goaltending from Tori Viola Lafferty. Boys, taking out Again, the final score, all over aims for Brockton Boxers, Brockton nothing. And for everyone here Caruso. at BCA Sports, our director, Paul Mandeville, replay graphics audio, Mike Simmons, our two camera guys, Jacob Hazel and Aaron Tebow. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.